Israel's top court Monday struck down the government's controversial judicial reform passed last year, which triggered nationwide protests. While the Justice Minister Yariv Levin criticized the court's move, accusing the justices taking over power that should be divided between the three branches of the government, opposition leaders welcomed the ruling. This ruling comes after a year-long dispute between Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's coalition government and the judiciary. Today, we will look at Israel's controversial reasonableness limitation law, which led to massive protests across the country and what led the court's landmark decision to nullify it. Israel's parliament, the Knesset, passed the reasonableness limitation law, amending the basic law, the judiciary, last July. Israel has no written constitution, but rather a set of 14 quasi-constitutional laws called the Basic Laws of Israel, many of which can be changed by the Knesset. This amendment restricted all the country's courts, including its apex court, the High Court of Justice, from discussing and ruling on the government and ministerial decisions on the grounds of the judicial standard of reasonableness. This legislation was the only element of the Netanyahu Levin multifaceted judicial overhaul plan that had been passed so far. Its enactment caused massive protests across Israel, with many army reservists also threatening to not work. Even within the Netanyahu government, Defense Minister Yuav Gallant had publicly criticized these reforms, leading to a temporary dismissal. The reasonableness limitation law was passed after the center reconsidered its prior proposed reforms, such as a bill that would allow the Israeli parliament to enact laws that have been declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court, and a second bill that would have given the government almost total control over almost all judicial appointments. However, on Monday, in a decision of eight votes to seven, Israel's apex court nullified this law. While the 15 justice panel was almost split on its decision to strike down the contentious law. In its judgment, it asserted that it had the right to annul basic laws in specific situations if they undermine the foundation of Israel as a Jewish and democratic country. Outgoing Supreme Court President Esther Hayat, who ruled in favor to strike down the law, argued that the law does the most severe harm possible to the principle of separation of powers and the principle of the rule of law, and thus constitutes a severe blow to the two of the most explicit characteristics of Israel as a democratic state. Of the 15 justice panel, 13 believed the court had the power to review the basic laws and intervene, while five who supported this right declined to annul the reasonableness law and three others expressed concern over the law. However, the architect of the law, Justice Minister Levin, stated that this created a situation in which it is impossible to legislate even a basic law or take any decision in the Knesset or the government without the agreement of the Supreme Court, depriving millions of citizens of their voice. Netanyahu's Likud party also called the Supreme Court's decision unfortunate at a time when IDF soldiers from right and left are fighting and endangering their lives. The court's decision contradicts the people's desire for unity, particularly at a time of war. However, other leaders like National Unity Chairman Benny Gantz, part of Netanyahu's war cabinet, welcomed the ruling, stating, the Supreme Court's ruling must be respected and the lesson from conduct in the past year must be learned. We are brothers and have a shared fate. After the war, we will need to decide relations between the branches of government and legislate a basic law legislation that will anchor the status of basic laws. We will do so with broad agreement, he added. Gans had previously led protests against the Netanyahu government and its overhaul plans. Opposition leader Yair Lapid also offered his full support to the ruling saying the top court's decision ends a difficult year of conflict that tore us apart from within and led to the worst disaster in our history. This is the Shabakchi for the print. Follow the print for all the latest updates. Thank you.